Hi, my name's Mike and I make videos of my allotment and the occasional woodworking project. So what have I been doing this week? Well most of it's been dictated by the weather. We've had heavy rain, strong winds and hailstorms. I've already got a, a shed project to complete and that is boxing the toilet system. Okay, so that's my introduction and for a friend of my granddaughter's in Oxford who wanted to learn about making videos I just want to show now just turn the camera around just to show you something. This is what I've been using as a teleprompter. The buzzword is when you draw you remember more. It is a fact that the average note taker writes one third of a word per second, i.e. three seconds per word, while the average lecturer or narrator speaks at three words per second, which creates a problem. It's important when narrating that you must look directly into the lens. Let's see, in the... Grandad, have you put up that oh, video oh, then? Hello. Hi. That's a surprise. Are you going back to Oxford? Yeah, I'm going back today, yeah. Oh, that's nice. I was just wondering if you put up that video yet. I've just finished it and I'll be putting it on the internet tonight. Oh, brilliant. Oh, I can't wait. And are you going to watch it with your friend? Yeah, I'll show my friend. She'll be happy to see it. Right. Okay then. Well, safe journey. See you later. And take care. I'll FaceTime you. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye. If one reads a prompter that is not directly above the lens, which is an expensive piece of kit, the lens will pick this up and one will lose audience connection. I find using sketch noting, I can recall from a list of drawings better than I can recall from a list of words. Most of you know that I served an apprenticeship as a joiner before going to building college to learn surveying and I found that taking of notes was very difficult and I resorted to using mind mapping. There are three general rules for sketch noting being for me I find rule three the most useful. Hi my name is Mike and I make videos of my allotment and the occasional woodworking project. So what have I been doing this week? Well most of it's been dictated by the weather. We've had heavy rain, strong winds and hailstorms. I've already got a, a shed project to complete and that is boxing the toilet system. Okay a verb I had difficulty with was hoeing. Well, I transferred a picture I got from Canva into Keynote. In Keynote you have a select button right at the bottom for you to choose. And I chose a file that had the picture of somebody hoeing. And then that was then placed into Canva. The next job was to take away the background which I did was the alpha icon, there it is, and you just touch it and the background goes and it's off, it's transparent. Still in Keynote, I then pull down the draw with pen icon and then it's just a simple method of tracing the outline of the figure you wish to depict.
And the last operation you go again to the drawing menu and you pull down a circle and you place that all to the head. Then back onto the straight lines, marking the hole. I had a bit of a lapse of memory here. I've forgotten how to turn the object. And remember that's in the format menu in arrange to rotate and you and you decide the angle. The background figure when you're happy with what you've got and there you'll have remaining a stick figure. Well there we go it's that easy it really is. I did have problems when I was doing the introduction on an image for Oxford. It's a noun so you should be able to do it. I, I just couldn't think of one. I thought well maybe for the John Radcliffe. I'll have to sort some kind of drawing out. It's not impossible. It's amazing what you find on Canva or on Google, Google Images. You don't have to use Canva. One point that you've got to remember though when you're doing what I'm doing there is that you use an image that somebody else uses and that's got copyright. But by tracing an image, like I've done, oh, you own the copyright to your image, to the tracing. You don't have to worry that you're infringing any copyright. It's a useful tip is that. Right, oh and, and the other thing is that for drawing hoeing now, I can now do it freehand because you, you build up memory. That's a good thing. So we're drawing these stick figures or the verbs as I call them. It's practice. It's practice, practice, practice. Okay, let's get on to uh, showing you the finished work for the boxing in of the system okay the first task was to break into the top the first cuts were made with a power saw but i was limited on to how close to the edge i could get the remaining and the back edge were formed by chiseling and trued up using a small router dust control being an important factor into the shed i formed the bull nose to the front of the piano hinged lid If you look at the ray of sunlight coming through the door, it shows that even with the cam back operating, there is still a modicum of dust. It took a second run of the router to finish off the bull nose, and underneath the helmet, I am wearing a face mask. Taking the board back to the bathroom, I marked the board to the actual opening made. And at this point, I must state I cannot guarantee the formed opening is square. Normally, the first cut is to square up the board, but now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to off squaring the cut to the marks made. First, I raise the saw blade, set the piece to the blade. Draw the blade to the front, nudge the arm off square, lift, lower the blade and make the cut. Then turn the board round and repeat the process. Before I make the cut, I clamp the board to the fence as a precaution to any kickback that may occur. The next task is to mark the existing shelf at the formed hole at the rear cut for the piano hinge and then screw the piano hinge to this mark. Of course after I'd cut the hinge to its correct length. The hinge is then removed and the process repeated onto the lid and then screwed back onto the, onto the shelf using the existing screw hole. We now have a piano type lid to which the front panel can be removed giving full access to the inside of the systems for maintenance or part replacement. 
is only the second time this lid to the system has been removed. Probably in 30 years since the toilet was first fitted. This is the replace siphon valve fitted last week by a registered plumber. It's a simple matter now to put the lid back on, replace the front cover onto some clips that have been positioned on the inside. I'll hear them click and I'll lower it down a bit. And there it goes. My only job now is to cover this with vinyl. And for that I need an expert and I've got one, namely my wife. Didn't she do well? Right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. I know that it's not gardening, but it's work I had to do. And not only that, when it's raining, the shed tends to get everything bunged into it. And after doing a project like that, and with a machine and I had to do with it, I had an awful lot of uh, cleaning, cleaning up. And it's a good thing I've got the uh, canvas to keep the air clean. So hopefully next week, I'll be showing back to the allotment. I'm gonna have to buy some plants from the garden centre because you saw with the gales that we had, miniature greenhouse got blown over and everything got scattered asunder. All the seeds were blown, seedlings were all over and when I rescued them, they're, they're just useless. But that's gardening. We'll, we'll certainly get started with some seeds next week, or even this week, or even today. But uh, if you liked this issue, then a thumbs up would be nice. If you've not already done so, will you please uh, subscribe and to get the updates of further issues I'd like you to press that bell and please comment. I'll get some great comments and I hope I'll get some from this, some queries about the, the, the sketch noting that I've done. I've been doing it a long time and it really is a, a useful tool. So it just leaves me now to say, cheerio, take care of yourself and bye.